If 2020 couldn't get any worse, let me introduce you to 2036, a world on the brink of war and a movie featuring Anthony Mackie's best performance since he had sex with his best friend in a video game. You wax your balls. What? What the Outside the Wire is Netflix's latest sci-fi action film that asks the question, can the guy who played Urine Greyjoy play anything but a villain? Where are my niece and nephew? Let's go murder them. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the film's ending and some of those little details you may have missed. So make sure to like and subscribe because here we go. Violent Civil War. No, this isn't the attack on the capital last week. This is Eastern Europe in the year 2036. Lieutenant Thomas Hart plays a drone pilot for the US military. He's played by Damson Idris, who also started an episode of Black Mirror. In the film's very first scene, he must make a life-changing decision. Does he go ahead and shoot a mobile launcher which would kill two American soldiers, or does he do nothing, letting the enemy launcher potentially kill the entire platoon? When ordered by his superior officer to stand down, Harp disobeys and fires anyway, killing those two men. It's a decision that almost gets Harp court-martialed. Instead, he's deployed overseas as part of Experientum Octoriate, or Authority of Experience, the idea that only when drone pilots know what it's like on the ground can they make better decisions. We see the difference between the soldiers on the ground and the drone pilots. The soldiers on the ground are literally fighting for their lives, while the drone pilots are halfway around the world in Nevada sitting in comfy chairs eating gummy bears. Harp is sent to the block where the gumps are held. I got it, pig. Robotic soldiers who are literally the worst. There are two times in the movie where there's like a super tense moment, one of which includes hostages, and these robots are just like, fuck it. Do it live! And it makes sense Harp meets Captain Leo in this block, as we'll find out Leo is robotic. He refers to himself as fourth generation biotech, and it's clear these two share more differences than just a robot versus human. They differ in their philosophies. Leo finds Harp to be emotionless. God damn, you a cold motherfucker. Harp says you have to be, since emotion leads to mistakes, and in this line of work, you can't afford those. People are stupid, habitual, and lazy. Their emotions lead to mistakes. It's pretty interesting then that it's the machine who has the opposite view. Maybe humans aren't emotional enough, Lieutenant. Leo and Harp are tasked with a covert operation outside the wire, the area outside the demilitarized zone. Ukraine has become a hostile war zone in which Russia and the resistance fight for control with the United States playing peacekeeper. Their mission involves finding Viktor Koval, a warlord who wants Ukraine to become part of Russia. Remind you of anyone? <laughs> Over the course of the movie, they find Victor is seeking control of nuclear passcodes to Russia's Sistema Perimeter, abandoned Cold War bases which still hold nuclear weapons. If Koval could get a hold of these, he plans on nuking the United States. Harp doesn't like how Leo operates. He doesn't notify command when they find a Koval spy, buys illegal weapons from a resistance leader, and has Harp take out his tracking chip. Well, at least that's what he tells Harp. We'll find out later this isn't a tracking chip at all. It's Leo's failsafe, installed in him should he go rogue, and that's exactly what happens to him. About halfway through the movie, Harp finds out that he's been manipulated by Leo. Leo isn't the one in command, he is. All this time, Harp thought he was the subordinate. So we're partners. Fuck no. My support. For example, when they find the Koval spy at the refugee camp, their trail to Koval goes cold. Their orders are that if the trail goes cold, the operation is to be aborted and they have to return to base. Unless an intel officer like Harp has a hunch. An intel officer like yourself can follow an aborted line and it's considered a hunch. If I do it, it's a fault. So Leo manipulates Harp in order to conduct his master plan. And this involves Leo getting Harp involved in acts of insubordination, so his programming no longer needs to follow Harp's orders. My backup system allows me to relinquish the need for human authority if said person is exhibiting improper or impaired judgment. In fact, Leo specifically requested Harp for this job because of his ability to exhibit improper and impaired judgment. And with this failsafe taken out, Leo has become a rogue agent, hell-bent on releasing the nukes on America. But why? As Sophia, the resistance leader, tells Harp, it's not the U.S. that wants peace. In fact, it's the opposite. Destabilization in the area is great for America. It boosts the military industrial machine and causes their enemy, Russia, to focus their efforts on their Ukraine instead of the US. America benefits from war in the region. But that still doesn't explain why Leo goes rogue. He goes rogue because he believes what he's doing will save more lives than it kills. It's ironic because
because this is the same utilitarian thinking Harp used at the beginning. Harp believed that by sacrificing two people, he'd save the rest of the platoon. Leo believes that by killing one million, he'll save a hundred million. Says the man that killed two to save 38. Can you kill a million? I'll save a hundred million. Leo believes these autonomous cyborgs like himself will only lead to more death and destruction. So if he can prove to the world they are faulty, i.e. able to go rogue and launch nukes, they'll have no choice but to stop production. You want them to shut the program down? For a long, long time. They need to understand that these wars must end. And I am the face of never ending war. Harp goes from an emotionless, cold, and calculated drone pilot we see at the beginning of the film to the opposite. Instead of letting Leo get away with his attack, he stops him, believing that the greater good isn't about what saves more lives, but believing that humanity can become better. Humans can learn to do better. That is the greater good, Leo. Harp is able to escape right in the nick of time as a drone strike takes out the nukes. And don't ask me how that's possible without completely setting them all off. I'll have to bring Neil deGrasse Tyson on next time to clear that up. With Harp having saved the day, he's granted permission to go back home and be with his girlfriend. And the US military will probably be like, hey, we probably shouldn't make those super soldiers anymore. Although the movie is action packed with sci-fi elements, it's really a movie about our decisions. Emotional versus practical, human versus robotic. If you were in Harp's shoes, would you also make make the same decision. I want you to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching everyone, please make sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time remember, Daddy loves you very much.